Sie hören eine Produktion des Podcast Imperiums. Ich bin Luke Skywalker und ihr hört Nerdizismus, der nerdige Podcast. Viel Spaß! Herzlich willkommen zu einer weiteren Ausgabe von Nerdizismus, dem Podcast für Nerds und Cosplayer. Mein Name ist Chris und mit mir dabei Nerdizist Michael. Hallihallo. Weiter geht's mit unserer Interviewreihe von der Comic-Con in Dortmund. Und dieses Interview habe ich auch nicht geführt, sondern du mit dem Forever Nerd Girl. Und das muss ja eine ganz besondere Erfahrung gewesen sein. Na, besonders kann man schon sagen. Vor allen Dingen besonders diese Person. Ich weiß nicht, ob ich, ob ich persönlich sie anstrengend fand, weil Anja fand sie großartig. Also sie ist sehr gut mit ihr klargekommen. Um wen geht es? Es geht um Bai Ling. Und wem das jetzt nichts irgendwas sagt, die sollte mal in Star Wars in den Prequels auftreten, wurde aber rausgeschnitten, gerüchteweise, weil Disney nicht damit klarkommen, dass, äh, klarkam, dass sie blank gezogen hat. Das ist war sie noch nicht lange vor Disney. War das noch lange vor Disney? Das war bei den Prequels. Das war den Prequels, ja. Ab Episode 1. Hat, ach stimmt, Disney hatte das noch nicht. Ja, Lucasfilm ist nicht damit klargekommen, dass sie blank gezogen hat. So irgendwie sowas, angeblich Gerüch Gerüchte. Sie sagt, sie wäre nur rausgeschnitten worden, und äh, weil es einfach nicht reingepasst hätte. Aber ich habe keine Ahnung. Die Frau war ziemlich crazy drauf, äh, hat viel Körperkontakt gesucht und es ging auch direkt zur Sache, denn... Äh, Passend dazu kam es zu sehr anrüchigen Themen, möchte ich mal sagen. Also, möchtest du mir damit sagen, du hast dich ein bisschen geniert? Du, ich bin kein sehr offener Mensch, was sowas angeht. Deshalb hat Anja schon die richtige Position da eingenommen. Na, dann hören wir da mal rein. Ich bin sehr gespannt. Everything's fine. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Welcome yeah. back to the live stream. We are here with Bai Ling. Hey, Bai Ling, how are you, everyone? Ich liebe dich. Hey, you can speak German, that's great. Yes. <laughs> Japan Park Differency also. Oh, very nice. So, this is Maike and I'm Anja. We are from Nerdizismus. Uh, it's a German podcast where we are talking about nerd stuff like movies and games and cosplay and all this, yeah. <laughs> so we're here on the German Comic Con where a lot of nerds are around. So our big question for our guests are always um, if you would rate yourself as a nerd from 1 to 10 and 10 is the best, 1 is the worst, how would you rate yourself? Myself? I'm a nerd. If are you a nerd? nerd? Maybe. Are you a nerd? <laughs> you don't have to be. Or I'll be number 10 or number 1. Which was better? <laughs> 10 is the best. I'll be 10. All right. So Do you think, um, yeah, in, in which uh, kind of way are you nerd? Do you like movies? What's um, your topic? My topic, well, what comes to my mind is sexiness, <laughs> sensuality, because I was the first Asian woman on the cover of Playboy magazine. Yeah, so right. Choosing by uh, Hugh yeah. Hefner. So I think, in a way, I'm entitled to talk about that subject. Especially we're a woman here, right? And yeah. the German is much more open. That's true. Uh, and I'm always shocked. Yeah. Oh, did I? Yeah, it's on. Oh, was off? Yeah, now it's on. Yeah, I think. I'm sorry, I was off. Okay. But I now think we could hear you, you, you through the other mic. <laughs> What uh, did I want to say? Ah, oh, yeah. I'm uh, sometimes shocked that, like, in the US or in other countries, like, showing your Uh, breasts or something is uh, punished and I think it's so stupid because men can go topless right and I think okay what's the big difference so because women are always sexualized by their breasts and men are not so I think yeah that's interesting because I don't look at men's breasts and dimples all over right women's like the, the thing is like the violence all of this blood gun shooting and this violence are illegal Yeah, sort of like right. people can watch it. Yeah. Oh, the nipples, there's yeah. something so sensitive. Yeah. I don't understand why. I think, uh, you know, I used to, I don't talk too much about it, but my, I have big nipples. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
um, I'm talking about because we're talking about subjects. So um, I, I said, what is the uh, what is the problem? Because, for example, baby, right? Come the breast, the nipples is the first thing touched by the baby to bring to baby. It's love, True. it's nourishing. Yeah. Right. Where the milk come from? Yeah. For men, also, you know, excitement is love. It's something very essential, very natural, very prime. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I still don't understand why it's a big deal. I still don't. Understand. I could not even ask it. If I ask people, look at me like something wrong with me. That's what I'm talking about. Nerd, right? Yeah. It's a good nerd. You, you're. It's not obsessed with the nipples, but it's like good energy towards something beautiful about yeah. women. And know? also, it's like confidence, right? Yes. Uh, if you're confident and you show yourself maybe naked, uh, if you want to do it, but you don't have to, of course. Um, yeah, and I think um, it's a strong topic, and yeah, in the US, all all the time there's so in German, no problem. Yeah, under the right circumstances, I would say it's okay. What is the right circumstances? I, I mean, you, we have uh, TV movies and stuff like that in Germany where uh, nude scenes are not a problem because oh, yeah. they are not over sexualized. I mean, they are treated like it's uh, it's just a natural thing, life. it's a normal thing. So it's yeah. more usual, I think, for a German actress to be naked in a scene yeah. than. Not for, only in the movies, yeah. but also in theater. We have this. The time. Every time I go to the theater, someone's naked. I don't know yeah. why. Yeah. So actors don't mind. I I don't know. I I never talked uh, to to one of them. So, but um, they look always very confident when they are acting. So, yeah. I think the society somehow. Um, Redirect us, confuse us, and make us aware of things we should not be aware of, of, of embarrassment or about these beautiful things. I think somehow, you know, to me, I always think I give myself a quote. I say, when I'm not thinking, I'm a genius. When I'm thinking, I'm an idiot. But you're doing things like intuitive. Yes, so I think our mind is our enemy. Yeah, right. our mind is our enemy because it's our, they're the maid that grow up like to govern you. You know, don't do this, don't do that. But your natural being is natural. Is something very beautiful because you connect to the natural universe. Yeah, I think it's something that we have to encourage, it, especially for like uh, the young, younger, your younger audience yeah. and the kids grow up. You have to be free because otherwise. Your talent is gonna be like squashed. You don't even see. You can't yeah. find your dream because you're you're scared. Yeah, true. As first like Chinese on Playboy, and now maybe there were more like yeah. diversity. I mean uh, legacy. Yeah. Uh, and how do you see the development um, like in the U.S. or in some other countries? Um, like directors are mixing up more the, the the cast like there's more diversity do you think this is a very good development i think that ultimately uh, of course there's a couple of movies come out with asian suddenly got the heat hit hit then become topic people are trying to use more of the actors but still i i think it takes a long time because of my myself i'm asian i mean hollywood i know what it is it's not exactly changing it's like okay. suddenly there's a heat but Often, like last few times, I have this uh, TV series offer, and I was in the end, I was substituted by, oh, now we want black, now we want white, now yeah. we want Spanish. Yeah. See, it's all like it's not really about my talent; it's about the color. I can yeah, change yeah. my color. Yeah. And I see this is one of the problems right now because that's why I uh, asked the question. Um, there was uh, like the Marvel movie Black Panther. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we need a black cast, like. Okay. Yeah, it's like an over reaction when something is uh, like successful. It's really successful. Everybody thinks now we need more violence in movies because Deadpool was successful. Now we need more black people in movies because Black Panther was successful. But nobody ever. I mean, I don't know if it's the industry boss bosses or if it's like the marketing team that chooses something like this. But it's not about. It's not about how they look, but what they portray. I think, uh, you know, uh, be honest, the, the movie industry is a, it's a business. It's a commercial industry. It's True. about to, to fulfill like, the consumer's needs. But the majority of consumer in, in the world is like, especially how it's white. 
right? And Asian black or Spanish, there's just a little bit of touch of uh, almost like ingredients for dessert or something people like. You know, but you have to like, money, they want to make money in this film, so I understand they cast whoever is heat, heated, like fast food where needed. But I think after a while, like now for me, the Marvel movie is great, but sort of similar. Monster from the sky, from yeah, the sea, you save a woman or a mother, same story. Yeah, yeah. If I don't understand, I don't care, so yeah. they don't touch me. But that's why there are a lot of independent films. I think when people get tired, they're gonna go back to real life. There's no special fact. Real life action, real life emotion, real life stories that touch people's heart. I think it's gonna go with its own cycle. So you can't force it, you can't be worried. So in the meantime, whatever we have to do, we have to go with it because that's reality. You know, yeah. and of course we make noises, changes, but I think it changing it has to come from us. Like now I'm writing my own movie, I'm going to direct and start my own movie. Oh really? Yeah, so Very I think cool. those are frustrations are make us want to do more because you're not satisfied. You say, okay, nobody cast me if, because I'm Asian for this role, I'm going to do something for myself. Yeah. I think on the other Ooh. hand, it's really good um, somehow power you have because what are you going to do? But that takes guts, takes courage, it takes a lot of um, uh, confidence, a lot of braveness yeah. you know, to do. But somehow it's another level. That's something I find myself want to do. It's scary, but it's more exciting. You know? what, so what those sort of things. What would it be about? About a woman empowerment about the sex relationship, like from a female's perspective, to look at sex. Because That's we know because men. they're always uh, directed by men. Such you know what I mean? Yeah. They don't know us. Yeah. They stereotype <laughs> either, either your nurse or wife or waitress yeah. or seductress or a tough, successful CEO. But what is the complex of woman? doesn't matter what they do. So only us, when you also we see men differently. You know, men want to portray them as powerful. Yeah, the powerful men. But we love. see the subtlety. They don't yeah. have to be powerful. Powerful. There's a lot of beauty in gentleness romance. This is something I want to discover from a fresh new perspective on my own. Really nice. I'm very excited Thank about you. that. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and where do you want to produce it? Will it be in the US? In the US, it will take place, uh, the story is taking place in San Francisco, like in my mind, uh -huh. because this road go up and down. It's like you're up, then you're down, you disappear. It's like very yeah. interesting dynamic. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad that's not New York or Los Angeles again. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? Like all the movies are New like York? in LA or in New York. Yeah, <laughs> all the time. Cool. Because San Francisco is very diverse. Yeah, you know, true. It's like real life. Like LA, New York is like fast paced, like yeah. cosmopolitan. LA is just superficial, Hollywood glamour. Yeah. But, but in San Francisco, I think it's more real. Real people live in life. I want to tell a real people's simple, powerful story. So in what stage are you right now with this movie? I finished the script already, so I already sent a couple of my close friends. They, everybody told me it's so powerful. So now I, I want, um, I'm rewriting, but one, I want to make it perfect. I want to make it into a masterpiece. I can always develop, always improve. So now I'm, it's ultimately it's a love story. So I want to make this love story really, really like contemporary, but a very, you know, the color I see is like vibrant, it's like a um, Matisse, like Kantinsky's bright color. I want to make this world uh, kind of real, but it's not real fantasy world that all men or women want to walk in. You know, it's like this movie is visual, you know. So now I'm rewriting this love story. I want to make a masterpiece. That's what I want to do. I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah, this should be exciting. Yeah, yeah. it's very exciting. You know, um, something contributes something like um, meaningful from you. Have um, we any more questions from the viewers? Yeah. Did you uh, um, have you been an angel or an angel? Yes. Yeah, I did. So uh, the question is, how was the chemistry between you and David Barinas? Fantastic. <laughs> you know, David is funny. Angel. He angels. He's so serious. He's sad. He's melancholy. He's always thoughtful. But in real life, he's a funny guy. He's so <laughs> funny. He's so sweet. He's joking around. I said, you're totally different from the fact from the characters. Character has to be like that. <laughs> so my character actually my character can burn you know yes he he's really good character like we have great chemistry with her, right? there's a great extractive kind of uh, undertone between uh, our okay. characters it's really I like my character mm -hmm. they give me this uh, cheekbone like blue dye, uh, okay. purple eye eye eyeballs so like I can't really see like <laughs> I can only see this but I can I have to see because they blocked it. 
That was really fun of the supernatural powerful um, character. I love. I'm all re I'm rewatching Buffy right now. Oh, <laughs> and, yeah. one. and after that, I wanted to start Angel again because I watched it like years ago. So I'm and after that, you should read the comics because they continue the whole story in comics. Right, right, right. Yeah. I want to tell you a little story, quick, but it's very important about fate, about trust, and something related to Angel. So that's how I meet George Lucas. Star Wars. Yeah, I want to tell you, it's it's a miracle. So I was in the MTV Music Award. You know they have in, during the break commercial. You just wait like you're, you're just waiting for the next segment, right? I was kind of bored, so I I left. I go to the green room. I said get some food. I was waiting for the food. Waiting after a while, I said, Wow, the person standing in front of me was George Lucas. I was like, How could it? I said. I must talk to him, but I feel like every actor or everybody want to ask for a job, right? We talk to him about the Star Wars, sure. right? I said, go, oh, what should I do? I was debating in my mind. I said, no, I'm not like every actor. I'm not going to ask for a job. I'm not even going to say her. I'm not even going to talk to him. How crazy is that, right? Nobody was like, he's in front of me. You can't even meet him. There's nobody can sit and meet him for you. I left. Can you imagine? We started saying hello. So I got food. I was sitting in the little sofa. I was sitting and took my shoes off, you know, the high heel shoes. Yeah. Right? I was eating. I think sometimes my mind is like, if you talk about nerd, it's a weird, right? You left George Lucas. <laughs> so I was sitting there eating and eating. And then this lady came and he said, Bailin, I love you in Angel, the role you play. I'm a huge fan of you. You know, she was talking to me about, oh, like excited. And then she said, can I sit here and take my shoes off? I said, sure, that's why I'm here. We're eating, or take pictures, chatting. Suddenly, I see George Lucas walking directly towards us. <laughs> I said, is it real? He walking, walking. I was like, actually, he walked to us, in front of us. Then this girl getting up, he said, Biden, let me introduce you to somebody. This is my dad, George Lucas. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Can you believe that's Katie Lucas? Yeah. <laughs> She's a huge fan of uh, 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 Angel, right? Yeah. She was one thing. I was like, I, I, I loved. Then I was so excited. I was sitting later. I was sitting in the middle. I said, "Oh, George!" I said, "Oh my God!" I said, "I, I, I said, I want to be Star Wars. It would be cool, you know. Star Wars have clipper free." And she says, "I was trying to make a story. If she says character, you use her pain as one pole, weapon, all of that." I said, "Oh my God! If I have a chance to work with you, that would be my dream come true, right?" He said, "He said you're a good actor." I said, "You know me." It's like a normal, like, yeah, like Red Corner, you know, people love my performance. So I said, I was also so nervous. I said, nice to meet you. I left again. <laughs> I was, left again? Yeah, I did like, <laughs> I left. I don't know what's, I'm just nervous. I pipe up and I said, nice to meet you. It's my chance, sit there and chant, right? I was, but I, you made an impression then. Yeah, so I left <laughs> the important thing. Two, two weeks later, because I was in Hawaii doing a, a panel for a Maui Film Festival, right? Normally when you get a job, your agent, your manager is on the phone calling you, right? Got job. Bailin! Everybody calls you, oh, what's going on? He said, what happened? I said, what happened? He said, you got to offer Star Wars. I said, well, how did it happen? We never submitted me. Nobody how did it say? They didn't know what happened. I said, well, because I know why, right? I think he's kind of like me, right? I said, really? I said, which true? I said, nobody knows, they wouldn't tell us. I said, really? He said, you have to go to Warner Brothers to try wardrobe. They're going to um, uh, fit the access script directly to your house on your name. We, wow. We're not allowed to know. They're kind of pissed. Shit, we don't know they have to. Only you can read it. I said, really? So like, uh, after one week, they flew me to Sydney, Australia, shooting for that. Can you believe it? To the end it's, of the world. Yeah. 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 I'm talking about fate, right? If it's yours, you can't avoid it. Avoid it. It came to me. If it's not yours, no matter how much you try, it's not going to happen. So sometimes you have to have faith, you have to trust. I tr I'm not trusting, I was have a weird mind. I love, but they come to me. See, the universe has a direct daughter here from Angel, from the, you know, the, the that, that yeah. TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Lead yeah. to this. You yeah. know, lead to how I meet George Lucas, how I, it's your fate, you can avoid it. Somehow I just feel like if you're graciously living your life, celebrate, and trust your instinct. I did trust the instinct. I don't give a shit, I'm sorry to say that. You can I, say it. I you trust it. <laughs> I trust my instinct, which is true. I said I'm not gonna sell myself as actress to a director like anybody else. I have a pride, I'm a worthy being. That's what I have in my mind. So I walk away, but the the opportunity walked to me. So sometimes we are by trapped opportunity, you have to be not arrogant, you have to be elegant, you have to be graceful for yourself. Yeah. Right? This is a story. Yeah. True yeah. story. 
That's a really nice story. Yeah. <laughs> so, we have something for you. You can choose if you want to. Okay. Either you go with a German booth, <laughs> it's oh. like a herb liquor, okay. or you can get all the Haribo you want. You can get both. So is the alcohol? <laughs> you can get the alcohol? Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm thirsty, I'm drinking somebody. I want to, uh, what does it smell like? But it's strong. Yeah. It's a herb Yeah, it's liquor. a little like Jägermeister, yes. do you know it? Jägermeister? Mm -hmm. No? Uh, but uh, yes, uh, they have it in the US, right? Yeah, Jägermeister? I guess yes. so, yes. Mm, yeah. Try one. <laughs> really good. Yeah. This one's nice. like I'm chewing uh, plastic, right? Rubber. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, and one more thing. Every guest that was here uh, did a little something for us because it's like the Christmas time now. Mm -hmm. And we have a German Christmas carol. Maybe you also, <laughs> know, I don't know if you know, uh, a Christmas tree or Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. All is calm, all is bright, mother, <laughs> mother and child. I'm just in a, in this room, you don't know it, all your friends. It's so warm, so nice. Outside is cold, a lot of people like here, like perfect. Yeah, you dress perfectly, but this is like... Yeah, we're just like... It's <laughs> getting you're, really you're, hot you're nice, like, like yourself there, have these bright lights. It's nice. They're nice for photos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for being here. I hope you enjoy the German con Comic Con. I enjoy it very much because I love traveling. I like Germany. I like German people and culture. They always are open to me, accept me, so I appreciate that. I was in the Berlin in Ice Jewelry. Member, really? Yeah, and all this paparazzi found me. Like a lot of people, just like they somehow welcome my freedom and sexiness and openness. So I really appreciate that. That's why any opportunity I come, I come here. Like yesterday, I went to Cologne just yeah, to Cologne right witness there. that big dawn. Yes, powerful. The man kind of creation. Your German people is like, look at that like ghost. It take like seventy five years old years, seventy five years to build it. Do you know that? It's yeah, amazing. Yeah. So I appreciate like being here in um, me, okay. and I want your fans to follow me. And I am by Instagram because I get fat free, sugar free cookies every day. So some people, yes, yeah. <laughs> so, not like this, fat free. <laughs> again, thank you, and thank you, everyone out there. We will be shortly back with another guest. Hopefully. <laughs>